I had to wait two weeks after this experiment to film this video. That is how much this experiment set me back. So in this video, what I'm going to do is share my experience with deliberately lowering my dopamine to observe how I would respond, how I would behave, and also how it would affect my quality of life. The purpose of this experiment when I first applied it and conducted it was to essentially develop a degree of empathy for those that you know, discuss or describe having low dopamine. The most important thing here is for me to understand experientially. And one thing that I've noted is that experiential learning is the best form of learning in my experience. It's one thing to read something on a paper, something to, you know, to read it in a scientific study, but then to actually experience it and to apply it to my own body, that's when I tend to get the best understanding and the best knowledge and application of that knowledge. Now, the third reason why I actually conducted this experiment was to showcase my findings to you guys, the scientific community, and to basically illustrate how negative and how deleterious it is to have a low basal level of dopamine. So firstly, we need to look at some of the functions of dopamine. You've probably heard me talk about it quite a lot on this channel. If you're brand new, please check them out. I'll leave a card up here. But basically the functions of dopamine are quite broad. You know, that basically dopamine affects cognition, memory, attention, emotional behavior, learning, movement, sensory stimuli, pleasure, reward, addiction, emotion, perception. So basically dopamine acts on a variety of you know, pathways in the brain and can very much influence our perspective, our behaviors, and our overall quality of life. How did I lower my dopamine? Again, this is absolutely not medical advice. I do not encourage you to try this at home. But basically what I did was I ordered myself some Corydalis extract, which is rich in L-tetrahydropalmitine. And then I also ordered some L-tryptophan, which is the essential amino acid, which is the precursor to serotonin. Now I'll quickly describe my rationale and my understanding for why I actually you know, utilize these two compounds to lower dopamine. The first one being Corydalis extract, very much used in traditional Chinese medicine as an anxiolytic. It helps with sleep onset, reduces anxiety, but it's also known as a natural antipsychotic. And it can also, you know, be used to treat various forms of addiction. So we can see here, this study was titled L-tetrahydropalmitine, a potential new medication for the treatment of cocaine addiction. Now, obviously I don't have cocaine addiction. I've never used the drug itself, but the rationale here is that L-tetrahydropalmitine is a dopamine D1 and D2 antagonist, and then also displaying some degree of antagonism to the dopamine D3 receptor. So basically what it's doing is it's blocking dopamine from actually binding to its respective um, receptors in the brain, which is going to yield a basically a nullified effect of dopamine in the brain. Now, the next ingredient is L-tryptophan. L-tryptophan, as you should hopefully know by now, is an essential amino acid which can get converted into 5-HTP and then from 5-HTP into serotonin. We can see that there's various nutrients and vitamins that are needed to actually convert tryptophan into serotonin. So basically what I did in this experiment was I combined both L-tryptophan and Corydalis extract. Now I did use a thousand milligrams of L-tryptophan and double the recommended dose on my specific Corydalis extract, which was quite rich in this L-tetrahydropalmitine. And what I did was I actually dosed it in the morning, deliberately knowing that uh, it's you know gonna be impairing my performance on that day. So basically here's what I noticed from deliberately lowering my dopamine. First and foremost was the impaired motivation. Now, usually for me, I wake up pretty inspired and motivated to film videos, create content for you guys, go to the gym and just 
get stuff done. What I felt on this was that my motivation was impaired and I struggled to actually find the willpower to you know initiate tasks i also noted that there were more negative thoughts and i was also doubting my abilities as an educator and content creator now for me i'm pretty aware of some of the thought patterns and the thought loops that come through my head on a daily basis but what i definitely noticed was that and this is something that i notice if i'm not in a good headspace is that there's just more intrusive you know negative thoughts that really just they're not serving me and they're not actually helping me at all. And so that's something that I noticed was that I was more negative. You know, I had a negative outlook, I had sort of a negative outlook on things. Also found that I was fatiguing earlier during my workout. This was evident, you know, I'm pretty aware of how much energy I have left in the tank when I'm training. And what I noticed was that I had less energy, you know, during my workouts when I was having this particular stack. I also had zero interest in binging on anything. You know, sometimes I find myself, I just want to binge and watch videos on YouTube or, you know, just indulge in chocolate or whatever. Um, but I actually had zero interest to binge, which was ironic. I also felt more emotionally sensitive. So I was just in general, just more sensitive and I felt like I could get triggered a lot easier. And then I also had a negative outlook on life. So I just in general, couldn't really smell the roses or just see how far I've come or just in general, just didn't have that ability to you know, perceive life as like there's numerous opportunities. And what's also really interesting was my inability to feel gratitude and to express gratitude. My ability to actually write down what I was grateful for had no actual sensation or feeling to it. It literally just felt like I was a robot writing down you know, what I was grateful for. They're probably like the main things that I noticed in terms of the effects that I felt having low dopamine. Obviously this is not something I recommend people do, but it was just something that I really want to illustrate and to describe what can happen in a low dopamine state. So I wanna also link this to some scientific literature, some of the low dopamine outcomes with aging and increased inflammation, we see a decrease in dopamine receptors, decrease in dopamine transporter, we see a decrease in dopamine synthesis and availability. And these are some of the effects that it can have. It can increase the effort cost. So it can make effort feel like it's more difficult. It can decrease motivation, decrease reward learning. It can then also affect our gait speed or our movement patterns. It can affect you know, motor function and, and can also increase physical fatigue ability. From the cognitive systems, it can decrease processing speed, decrease cognitive uh, control, decrease executive function, and increase mental fatigue ability. And this is you know, obviously gonna lead to vulnerability to the development of later life depression. And again, I want to challenge you, is it serotonin deficiency, or perhaps is it a low dopamine state that's inducing depression? So here are some of the lessons that I learned from this experiment. Number one, I respond very poorly to low dopamine states. I also respond poorly to raising serotonin levels and dopamine also massively alters my outlook and perspective on life. I felt a sense of learned helplessness to a degree having low dopamine and that I'm obviously ultra self-aware and I hope that those of you who are watching this video also develop a strong degree of self-awareness so that you can you know, strategically know how to apply certain compounds to suit your biology. I was a bit hesitant to actually make this video. I didn't, I didn't wanna scare people off too much, but everything's okay, I'm fine. You know, I've recovered fully and I'm you know, back online back in fashion, motivated. And yeah, I just wanted to share my experience and my experiment using Corydalis and tryptophan to deliberately lower dopamine and slightly raise serotonin. And you know, these were the effects that I noticed. So thanks everyone for tuning in. Hopefully you learned something new. Um, please do check out all of my other links in the video description. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.